Hello everyone, are we ready for a weight loss challenge? I have a guest today, dear Lauren, she will be with me and we are starting a weight loss and fitness challenge, getting ready for summer. Hi Lauren, welcome. How are you? Thank you very much, how are you? Good, good, sorry for the time change. That's all right, I'm in, um, I'm in, yeah, I'm in, I'm in the Bali, I'm in Bali at the moment and it's 10 p.m. Yeah, I heard. I heard. And, Lovely. Uh, yeah. yeah, tell me more about Bali. What, what's going on? <laughs> um, I came out to Bali about 15 days ago just to like have some time off. Um, you know, it's so important to just take a step back and just ask yourself what you need, slow down. So I've just been just taking, I've just been trusting the process and doing everything I've needed here. But it's been amazing. I've got another five days here. So I'm excited. Lovely. How is Bali? Oh, it's amazing, oh, it's, honestly. It's, it's amazing, right? Yeah, it's it's one of my I've it's one of my favorite. There, so. You should you should go there because it's literally what an amazing place. Wow. Yeah, I'll I'll have it on my list. <laughs> yeah, so welcome. Maybe we should for everyone who's listening. Maybe uh, we should start by introducing you. And yeah, then we no, can of course. Go from there. Um, my name is Lauren. I am I'm a motivational speaker, a life coach. An addiction counsellor. Um, I'm very big around fitness and health as well, but um, a lot of my motivational speaking is around addiction. Um, talking about addiction, make, pe making people become aware around addiction, you know, that anyone can battle addiction, whatever it is. Um, and then also talking about mental health and trying to break the barrier around mental health that, you know, want people to start actually just getting honest and truthful to who they are and not having shame around it. And knowing that there is, you know, there is uh, an opportunity to change your life through many steps and many tools. Like we'll go on to talking about how like fitness has changed my life when it came to dealing with my addictions or, you know, like breath work, slowing down, trust the process. It's like about finding those ways and those tools to get to that place in your life where you can actually manage um, those things. And in myself, I battered addiction. So I battered addiction from a young age. And I got sober at the age of 18. And um, so I had dealt with it myself. Um, and I use all these things in my life that help me become, I would say, a better person. So, yeah, that's me. Yeah, lovely. Lovely. Yeah, we're getting ready for a challenge at Breath Hub app. And I will personally be supporting our users with different teachers around the world to, um, you know, look back at their lives and... Um, I think gain a different perspective about fitness and about weight loss mm. because there are a lot of addictions, eating disorders, addictive eating behaviors as well around mm. the world. And today I want to a little bit talk about those and uh, learn your ideas about, you know, if you were you if you have worked with people who have addictions around food, sugar, or maybe eating disorders, mm -hmm. what do you think are the reasons? Because we want to teach. Uh, our health, you know, healthier habits. We want to help people lose weight, get fitter, but yeah. also get gain back their health. Yeah. And I think learning a healthy eating habits yeah. and uh, you know looking deeper into the reasons of eating, ha you know, different eating habits or eating disorders are very important for a start. So, what has been your observation around those? I mean, I definitely someone that has battered my own eating disorders you know it came from a very very young age where you know i picked up food to change where i felt and it's all about our childhood where it starts and our um our habits and our behaviors that we pick up to try and deal with things um and a lot of us i would say in society have a weird relationship with food whether it's like you know overeating or under eating or uh, body image issues or comparing ourselves to others you know society has shaped us in that way to kind of put a lot of pressure on ourselves and there's a lot of shame attached to um overeating or under eating or even eating as a whole um and society also tells us how we should eat or what we should eat um so that's then we become attached to these um negative um qualitations of emotions and feelings and maybe feeling that's the, what we should do. And then when we do it, we actually start to feel guilt and shame around it. Um, and it's about rebuilding that and actually going back to our childhood and kind of going back to building healthy, healthier relationships with our, 
self and food um, and eating normally um, and knowing that weight can go up and down, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you've actually put on weight, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the sense of like, you know, you can eat and then put on a pound, but it doesn't mean that you've put on weight. And I think a lot of us find difficulty with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like what I, I what I love to talk about is is I love to talk about you know breath work is important when it comes to um, eating yeah. disorders or food addictions or even addiction as a whole because you know our minds are so busy and our minds are doing fifty million things at once that when we have a thought and a feeling we just act on it straight away and we have this impulse and you know for me like when I used to have like this overwhelming feeling of like anxiety the first thing I would do was stress eat and I would straight away do it without even thinking about the consequence. And I wasn't even thinking about the emotion, the feeling behind it. I was just doing it. And with breath work, it's really good because you get that opportunity to slow down and process things and actually ask yourself what you need because an urge can last five minutes. An urge is something that's so strong, like an urge to drugs and alcohol, an urge to food or whatever. But when it comes to like that urge, you kind of need to just ask yourself where you're feeling at that moment in time and sit with that feeling. And it's so important at the end of the day to do that. Yeah. And that's really, that's really been beneficial with me and my own recovery with food addiction. Yeah, and Jimmy, Jimmy wrote, weight management is different from weight loss. I love it. Yes, yeah, exactly. 100%. And as a, and as a, I mean, I myself as a behavioral scientist, but I have and a breathing scientist who have done a lot of research on the behavioral habits around breathing, especially. I have also realized, I have also found out that there is a great connection, like a big connection between the way we breathe and the way we eat, and yeah. I those urges. Uh, most people, you know, talk about those urges. You talked about on a psychological level, but actually those urges are there because of some physical um, change as well. Because if we have dysfunctional breathing habits, our chemistry change, and due to our chem the chemistry change in the body, our bodies don't produce enough ATP energy, mm. and we feel tired, we feel out of energy. And many people, of course, there, there's the psychological side of it where there's an urge and you want to suppress some emotions, like you said, whenever there's anxiety, panic, or fear, or you know, even shame, we want to suppress those emotions and we start eating without even thinking about it. But there's also actually the second side of it where you know, it's not because of an urge, but you literally are feeling tired and you're out of mm. energy. So in yeah. both cases, I think on the psychological side, just start, you know, taking a few breaths and taking some time to just move back a little, using our breath to pause and come back to ourselves, you know, uh, being more mindful helps. And then the second, analyzing our dysfunctional breathing habits, finding what we're doing wrong, that, that is affecting our body fluid chemistry is also, I think, a must. Because I've seen, I have had a lot of students who were eating not because of psychological urges, but literally they were feeling, you know, they didn't have the energy, they needed energy and they were feeling tired mm. and that's why mm. they were overeating. So I think understanding that, uh, you know, our respiration regulates our body fluid pH mm. and our breathing habits change our body chemistry. And due to that, if you're feeling low, tired, if you need energy, it might be because of your breathing. You don't need food. You can increase that energy. It actually boosts your energy just by you know, some, uh, practicing a breathwork session, especially involving the diaphragm. You know, and you can increase your energy instead of eating a you know, chocolate bar. Yeah. <laughs> and not that chocolate bars are bad or anything, but you know, not, you know, instead of eating a whole you know, chocolate bar, uh, you can just slow down boost your energy levels and get the energy you need by just, you know, practicing different breathing techniques. Yeah. No, it's a good, uh, good one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, um, Jimmy, Jimmy uh, said before, he was like, can you eat overeat on healthy things? And, you know, you can overeat on anything. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that, you know, um, overeating on healthy things will make you put on weight. Um, if you're eating a celery, hundred times a day you're not going to I don't think you're going to put weight 
but it's more about the psychological part of it like ask yourself why you're doing it ask yourself what it's what it's going to be doing for you mentally but also it's and most of the time when we're comfort eating it's when we're trying to avoid something and we're trying to avoid feelings and emotions and we're trying to like bottle it down and then most of the time when we're trying to bottle it down with stress food and stress eating we actually at the end of the day don't actually deal with that feeling and the emotion and we don't feel deal with the problem so it's kind of like like you said psychologically or emotionally or physically taking a step back and going okay you know what i can just sit in this and just breathe um and exercise like i always say to people go for a walk um and, and just get some fresh air take a breath go to walk yeah yeah get some fresh air <laughs> just stop just back out you know back a little bit and be mindful and i'm gonna ask you one one more thing if you have realized do you think that physical urge is about also chewing like the need to chew our life the need to chew and digest our emotions that's an interesting question um yeah i, I think as human beings we are so susceptible to be doing things constantly and we don't know how to just be and actually just sit still so you know as you can see in this world in this day and age there's so many people out there that are like you know actually just kind of like don't know how to sit still um and that's why like you know we're always on our phones we're always busy we're always doing things society shapes us and makes us do a hundred million things at once and it's kind of like i think as that's what we're like as human beings so actually we need to kind of just learn how to like not do anything if that answers the question at all yeah yeah exactly because it is when you learn yeah. to just stay yeah no i just said it is 10 p.m so i'm a little bit tired yeah yeah we'll, we'll, we'll keep it short and maybe if uh, the people who are watching us right now have any questions we can answer any questions what i realized and that's the reason why i asked you the question what i realized is um, you know, especially with my with my students, with my clients, that that sort of psychological urge also comes from the need to chew and, like you said, the need to do something. But mostly, people are trying to literally swallow their emotions. It's kind of like mm. your need to swallow emotions or chew emotions. And if we can sit still with our emotions, breathe into our emotions, we can mm. actually transform the emotional urges the emotional eating and mm. we have a lot of sessions you know courses on that on specific on that specific topic helping people you know go through those urges whenever mm. um, you know they feel those those urges we created the app in a way mm. that they can just open the app switch it on and listen to a session and just go through those emotions because mm. all the addictions are actually you know if you know food alcohol drugs whatever um, they are there because we're running away from something. We're running yeah. away from ourselves. We're running away from emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to I wanna, uh, dive into the addictions as well, like the need to, you know, run away, the need to um, swallow emotions, you know. Um, we're so, we're so, sorry to interrupt, but like we're so scared to actually just face things. And we're so scared to actually kind of just like, deal with what is going on so we go into fight flight freeze mode and we run away do you know what i mean and that's what i mean by like you know from our childhood we pick up coping, coping mechanisms and uh we pick up things to change where we feel because we're so scared to deal with that thing so whatever it is and you know it's kind of you know one of those things where you kind of need to just like i said be aware be aware of all the things that you are doing and the all things that you are picking up wherever it is but most of the time it can be the smallest thing you know to like for example picking up your phone you know and just kind of trying to avoid what's going on in real life or going into full-blown addiction um, and it's very common and a lot of people don't realize how common it is because they they see the worst case scenario but you know society like i said now everyone is kind of always doing something and it is stopping us from actually connecting and it's stopping us from actually kind of being within the present moment 
and that's what the amazing correlation to breath work is it's about tapping back into your present your into the present moment because the, the only thing that we do have that is ever going to make us truly happy is the present moment um and when when we run away from that, it's almost going to leave us feeling more fearful and scared and anxiety and, you know, and, and also in this element of like, where I, where am I in this world? So it's quite scary, but I think, you know, there are tools out there like breath work and um, fitness, exercise, you know, mindfulness practices that really help people tap back into that present moment to get to that place of being happy again. Yeah, and what you said in the beginning, um, the social conditioning, mm. many and many people are conditioned and I have been researching on the question, um, why do people get conditioned? Because strong people, strong individuals who are fully connected with their mission, who have a clear vision for their lives and who have who set goals for themselves, they do not get conditioned, but people who are disconnected from themselves, who do not stop, take time to breathe, you know, connect with themselves, meditate, take time to face themselves, are usually conditioned the most. So I think mm. understanding that th this fact is also very important. Like, of course, we are, you know, most of the people are conditioned and the reason why they are conditioned in, you know, body shapes or you know, about eating habits, good or bad, you know, nice or harmful or, you know, uh, useful is because they are not fully themselves and they are not fully connected with themselves. And like mm. you said, the connection comes from breath work because breath work is the most powerful tool ever to get back, get us back again to ourselves, you know, who we are uh, and also, you know, gives us the courage to face any emotions. And I think many people think that there is a way around when it comes to emotions. There is a way around emotions. But if you're trying to go around the emotions, you start building addictions and you start building, you know, eating disorders or whatever, mm -hmm. because you're trying to suppress your emotion. The only way out of any emotion is by going through that. Yeah, and, and I always say that. Yeah, and that's why breath work helps. And how... how um, when did you uh, meet with breathwork and how did your own journey with breathwork begin uh, and how, um, how is it continuing? I mean, for me, I have always had a weird relationship with meditation um, and always had a weird uh, relationship with mindfulness practices. You know, I went into rehab at 18 and I did start to do meditation, but I found it very difficult. And then when I went back into rehab at 21, I did a lot of like DBT work, which was like their dialect behavioral therapy. And then they taught me mindfulness. And I had a lot of friends in the fitness industry that were big in breath work. And I wouldn't say that I'm amazing in it, but I know that it has changed my life in one way, shape or form. Um, so I try as much as I can to do it. Um, and realize that it is one of the most amazing things that really can help people, you know, get to that place of comfort and ease in their life. Um, and also, I didn't realize how fast my breath was. I didn't realize how I was running my breath through anxiety. And now I learn how to slow my breath down. Um, so I do do like Calm App. Um, I have done Breath Hub as well. I do go to events and stuff like that. But I... I still have um, my own journey around breath work yeah. um, and it's like, it's like exercise, isn't it? It's like, you know, yeah. that it's amazing and you know that it's going to save your life, but yeah. you don't do it every day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And the best thing is it's much more easier than meditation because what you said is right now around the world, research shows that still there are a lot of people who are finding it hard to meditate because they're finding it hard to calm down their mind. It needs a certain level of focus, even with mm. the apps. And that's why, you know, as a startup uh, founder, I know the rates. That's why, like, the churn rates of meditation apps all around the world are, are high because mm. people see it, people start it, and then people can't continue because they're having, you know, finding it hard to focus. And there, again comes the importance of chemistry body fluid chemistry mm. because if you're breathing you know too fast or if you're breathing too much from the diaphragm if you're 
you, know, you have an effortful breathing, you go into hypocapnia and it's very hard to balance the inhale and exhale or the carbon dioxide levels so that you calm down because because of the chemical you know, change in the body, if you're breathing too fast or too deep from the diaphragm, because you go into hypocapnia, uh, you start feeling anxious and there is this hyperactivity happening in your system. It is almost impossible to calm it down by meditation. Mm. You need a stronger tool, a more physical tool. And that's why many people find it easier to you know, practice 10 minutes of breath work or five minutes of breath work to get back to balance. And the reason being because breath work changes our physiology, it changes yeah. our chemistry immediately. Uh, that's why it's much more you know, easier. And that's why I think uh, you know, people who go on a breath work journey, like our users, use breath up between three to four times a day for multiple reasons and our churn mm. rates are low and our retention rates are high and, and the reason being you know people do get results very quicker it's, it's like it's much more easier it's like exercise you can do it anytime during the day uh, for five minutes ten minutes it, it changes your whole chemistry and your whole yeah. mood uh, i think practicing daily is uh, more important than uh, you know, a few practices, uh, a couple of, you know, a few practices in a month. I think practicing daily for five to 10 minutes is mu much more valuable than doing a breathwork session for two hours every month because it's, you know, it gets you to a, to a balanced state when you mm. start practicing it. It's kind of like the same thing with exercise and with eating habits. Uh, it's like when you start managing and when you start doing it over and over again without, you know, under eating <laughs> or overeating, when you balance the whole thing, everything starts, you know, getting balanced. So what's the, what's the last thing you want to tell to people who are going on a weight loss fitness journey, uh, a healthier eating habit journey with us yeah. for the next 15 days, which, um, what, what kind of tips would you like to give to them? Yeah. So like you can't kind of ended it amazingly because I think a lot of people they go from like like you said go from like overeating so much and then under eating like being in the middle a lot of people find very difficult um and it's about kind of like having that moderation and having that balance so like every day making sure that you wake up you jot down what your food plan is you jot down what your workout plan is you jot down what your breath work plan is and you have that structure in place for the next 15 days and you just do like my saying in life is easy does it don't put so much pressure on yourself to the point where like you're gonna burn out or like it's too much just do the simple steps that are gonna make you just get to that place because we don't need to complicate things and i think what a lot of people do is they complicate it so much um and also at the end of the day like just remember that like with your e eating habits, you know, it's about having that awareness in place and going, I can change it. Do you know what I mean? It's, I think it's a lot of fear. Like I was so scared to change my eating habits because I was so scared that I was going to put on weight or lose weight. I, I used my eating habits because restricting for me made me lose weight for a period of time. But restricting doesn't make you lose weight for ne forever. It just f will do it for like, what, a week and that's it. And then... The same with like overeating, it doesn't get any better. So maybe when you're overeating, take a step back and ask yourself what your trigger triggers are. Like tiredness is a trigger for me for overeating. Um, anger is a triggerness. Um, when I'm hungry and I'm not eating, that's a trigger. So they say those are the things that you need to watch out for. Um, always reach out to people if you want to, if you're struggling. Um, another thing that I'm really big on. Um, and just remember, there's no such thing as failure. So like always get back on that high horse if you make a mistake. So those are my tips. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Welcome. Lauren. Thanks for joining us. Although it's 10 o'clock in Bali right now. And thanks for all the listeners, You're uh, everyone on live. And good today. luck to everyone that's doing it as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, see you soon. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.